All right, welcome back. Our subject here is I'm doing a comparison test with these two Darlington devices here. They're both optocoupler isolated from the high, um, low voltage circuitry. This one is a TIP120 on this seat sink. And this is the one you've seen in other videos, the MJ10005. Of course, you can see the motor up here. Alright, here's a review again of the transistor circuit that I used in the preceding small video clip. Either though in this case I'm using a TIP120. Alright, why did I choose this configuration? There's a couple of reasons. Um, I didn't have to deal with a pain in the neck P-channel MOSFET. And trying to find high-powered P-channel MOSFETs is really a pain in the neck. The second thing is this allows me to get away, to use a higher voltage on the motor. Remember, this is an H-bridge motor control, and there's your motor in between. This allows me to run a higher voltage than the uh, VGS on a MOSFET, which is usually limited to... 20 volts. So if I wanted to run this at 24, remember to leave the power supply for the CMOS logic at 12, I would just change the value of this resistor. And if I wanted to run it at 48, again, use a higher value resistor to limit my current and keep your current under 150 milliamps. Now, fortunately for a TIP120, um, its saturation current is 20 to 30 milliamps or so. Let me define saturation. That is the point is where I, with base current, that any additional base current results in no further collector current. Your collector current is your base current times HFE. That's the DC gain of the transistor. So this circuit has a huge advantage in that I can use higher voltages than the CMOS logic. I don't have to move deal with pesty P-channel MOSFETs, and I'm not limited by a 20-volt VGS. Now we hit run into a problem with these really high-power MJ10005 type transistors is their base current is considerably higher than a TIP120. You're, going, you're looking at three, 400 milliamps, which is going to exceed the current rating of any optocoupler that I can find. And if you're going to run this at 48 volts, You'll need to change the optocoupler to one that will handle a higher voltage. I think an H11AA1 will handle up to 70 volts. But as this one sits here, 24 or 12 works fine with this optocoupler. But this, none of these optocouplers that I know of can um, switch 3, 400 milliamps. That's why I just can't drop one of these big high-powered TO3 Darlingtons into this circuit. I have to go another route. Let's look at the specification sheet on an MJ10005. This particular Darlington, I mean, this thing can handle 20 amps, but let me note one thing right off the bat. This is not something you use in an audio amplifier. It is designed specifically for switching regulators, inverters, solenoid and relay drivers, motor controls, deflection circuits. It is designed to drive high-speed inductive circuits, not audio amplifiers. Compare this 
with the MJ11000 series. These are also same TO3 cases, similar but not as high current capabilities, but these come in both PNP and NPN types. These are intended for general purpose and amplifier applications. You can use these probably in an audio amplifier. How are they different? Let's look. Let's blow that up a bit. You notice internally I have resistors across the base emitter junctions of the two NPN transistors. There's your noise suppressor diode. You notice that this one is 8K, and this one over here, uh, bottom R2, is 60 ohms. Compare that, if you can see it. Compare that to 100 ohms and 15 ohms. Big difference. And you also have this built-in diode. Um, this helps speeds up the switching time. So you can see the construction is quite different. The base emitter resistors are far lower. And it's going to use a little more, it's going to use a lot more current, certainly, than a uh, TIP120. All right, besides the fact that it has a collector rating of 400 volts at up to 20 amps, let's look down here at your on characteristics. And this is why we run into collector emitter saturation voltage. All right. Anyway, it's like this. At 10 amps, I'm going to need a base current of 400 milliamps. If I want to drive this fully into 20 amps, I'm going to need a base current of almost 2 amps according to this spec sheet. Now, I didn't drive it into that nearly, and uh, so I didn't need the full 2 amps. I might have gotten it. But you can see where this problem is running in. We're running into problems on this. Now, let's look at the MJ11000 series. First of all, its collector voltage, depending on which ones you get, is considerably lower, no higher than 120. These things come in complementary pairs. What is a complementary pair? Basically, you have three, that's the 12, 14, and 16 are NPNs. The 11, 13, and 15s are PNPs. And they, when they mean by complementary pairs is that they have one's NPN, the other one's PNP. Their electrical characteristic current flows are opposite, but they have similar voltage ratings and gains. So you're going to see this particular series go from 60 to 120 volts, and it has a corresponding PNP value as well. So let's move on down to here. HFE or DC current gain. For one thing, the 11,000 series has considerably higher DC gain than the 10,000, which is typically maybe 50 versus 1,000. So the <coughs> lower, while this may have lower voltage, it has a Darlington has a much higher gain, and because it has much higher gain, it has much lower drive current IB. So in this case, if I need a, a IC of 20 amps, 200 milliamps will suffice, as where with the other one, you're looking at, oh, I don't know, the same uh, 20 amps. I would need 2 amps in base drive current. So this is the difference between them. 
And let's look how I got around this problem of drive current. All right, how did I get around this drive current problem for my Darlingtons? This is the circuit that I used. I used a uh, H11A1 optocoupler. It's a collector emitter breakdown voltage is 70 volts, if I'm not mistaken. So this particular circuit can be used up to anything, depending on, okay, Q1 is a TIP41A. It's rated at 60 volts, and of course, this is rated at 400. Q2, the MJE 10005. So you could use this particular circuit at 12, 24, or 48 volts as is, remembering the, uh, watching the value of this 470 ohm resistor. It'll probably work at any of it. What do we have here? When I turn the LED on with the other circuitry, I switch on the photo transistor. This creates a collector current, IC, which I labeled A. Well, A is actually B. It's the, it is the base current of Q1, the TIP41. Well, B times the HFE of Q1 gives me IC, which is current C. In these circuits, you'll end up with D down here. D is actually IE of Q1, which is IB plus IC. Again, IB is multiplied by HFE and Q1 to produce IC. IB plus IC is combined to be D, which is IE of Q1. IE of Q1 becomes IB of Q2. Of course, all of this adds together. You'll have IB of Q2 multiplied by the HFE of Q2 to produce IC, but all of it, A, B, C, D, and so forth, plus IC out here, becomes IE of Q2. The advantage of this kind of circuit is all of the current from the optocoupler Q1 and Q2 are delivered to the load. I measured the volt, uh, voltage drop, that's VCE at saturation. It's 2 volts, and that fit right in to the range of... Well, it says 1.9 if you're driving it with 400 milliamps DC at 10 amps. I was driving this at 3.6 and it came out about 2. Falls right within the specs according to the data sheets. The question becomes, why do I have a VCE, a voltage drop across Q2, of about 2 volts or so? In this case, these are live current measurements. I, was, I had a motor current of 3.7 amps. The motor would have been connected down here through an IGBT or MOSFET on the other side of the H-bridge. Nonetheless, it was real curious. When I measured between the collector, when I measured between the uh, uh, collector and base of Q2, I measured 0.6 volts. And if I measured between the base and emitter of Q2, I had 1.46 volts. If you add them together, oddly, it comes pretty close to the 2.16 volts that I had measured across collector emitter. 